Hello everyone and welcome back to another video of Fox Reacts. Today we're checking out a brand new vid from Jaw Sculpture, Top 10 Hated Games That Are Now Loved. Let's just see what kind of games are on this list, because I'm actually curious. What kind of games were the most hated to now be the most loved? And Guitar. Now, there we go. Oh yeah, Okami. How well a game ages is an interesting discussion. There are games out there that received heaps of praise for being innovative, yet are now seen as outdated. Then there are these games, the kind that weren't appreciated until uh, well found. after release. Why was a game hated at first? Well, there could be many reasons. Maybe it was too ahead of its time. Maybe it made too many drastic changes to the established formula. Like Maybe what? fans were burned from a previous entry and the what hate the? bled over. Oh, damn it. Give me a moment. Sorry, folks. All right, I tried messing around with it for a while. Let's just uh, see what happens. Previous entry and the hate bled over into the new one. How did they become loved? Maybe fans realized they were too harsh. Maybe new mm. fans appreciated them more. Maybe the stories were deeper than we realized at first. Or maybe fans were burned from a recent entry and wanted to look back on the good stuff. As for how to rank these okay, entries, there are a few though. factors. For one thing, how long did it take for fans to come around? How big was the disconnect between people hating the game and people loving it? How much does it make you From go, to love. wait, people actually hated this game? Whatever hmm. the case, these are the top 10 hated games that people now love. Oh yeah. This guy was cool. The Halo franchise left a permanent mark on gaming history with its numerous innovations that are now industry standard. Rebounding slash regenerative hey, health, enough. popularizing console online play, custom maps, and game modes. Now that there's not much left to innovate in terms of gameplay, <laughs> mostly anymore. what Halo games do nowadays is up the graphics and try telling a good story. Mm -hmm. Whether they succeed on that last one depends on who you ask. Mm, of course, yeah. don't expect them to hold on to that opinion forever. To really put this in perspective, I'd like to take a number from this meme. 2007, simply fantastic pinnacle of the series. It has been downhill ever since. In <laughs> retrospect, it wasn't as bad as originally thought. It had some great ideas and executed them well enough. Hmm. Screw this game. The multiplayer is broken and the campaign is crap. Rip Halo. <laughs> Three years later. Simply fantastic pinnacle of the series. It has been downhill ever since. In the retrospect, it wasn't as bad as originally thought. It had well, some great ideas and executed them well enough. <laughs> Screw this game. The multiplayer is broken and the campaign is crap. Rip Halo. Three years later. Simply fantastic Three years. pinnacle of the series. See the pattern yet? Yeah, the that, Halo franchise just, seems to be stuck in a loop fuck? when it comes to making new games. One minute a title comes out and it's called Hot Garbage! And then a few years later, another title comes out and what used to be the franchise killer is suddenly either not so bad or the best game in the series ever. Maybe For example, Halo mind. 4 Stick was originally seen as the overhyped least popular title thanks to its more casual gameplay. It also didn't help that there was a developership between Reach and 4 which really Oof. didn't leave a good impression. But that later on, people good. began humming its praises for the emotional depth given to normally stoic characters and recognizing the campaign's fun missions. Plus, it was a lot better than Destiny at the time. Then eh, Halo 3 ODST came out and was... Oh, come on. You gotta be kidding me. Eh. People have a hard time making up their minds whenever it comes to some stuff like this. Some people will say they absolutely love it or absolutely hate it. You can't just be a person that enjoys a game just to enjoy it. You have to be one of the extremes in some cases. Well, let's take a break and uh, just wait. Alright, we're trying the game with this. Let's just continue on. Shrugged Off was just an extension of Halo 3 and not worth the money, before praising its atmosphere, characters, and story upon its re-release on Steam. Now, don't get okay, me wrong, there's nothing cool. wrong with changing your mind on something. Opinions are supposed to change and evolve. But my point is, this keeps happening. 
So when do you call it out? The Halo franchise has always had a contentious life cycle. It was either really, really loved or really, really hated. Most of the Neville hate Cameron coming from thought. because the series was popular. No matter what, if you were a gamer circa 2002 to 2015, you had to have an opinion on Halo. And it was not allowed to be neutral or ambivalent. You either had to think it was the second thought. coming or the rapture. No agnostics in this house. It's video game politics. Just like real politics. <laughs> kind of funny how we're allowed to He's change right. our minds on certain Halo games, but society forces you to pick whether you fully love or hate the franchise itself. Though, I gotta right. admit, we're all kind of guilty of this at some point. I have stupidly hated on games for petty reasons, whether they were just different from what I was used to, or I couldn't play them and I was deluding myself out of envy. Yeah, young me, I didn't want it anyway. I'm taking my ball and going home. So yeah, the love-hate mess alone is the reason why this is at the bottom oh, like of the a list. Cartman thing. Imagine hating a Kirby game. Really? No, really, that was a thing at some point. As far as Nintendo titles go, the Kirby series rarely sticks to a formula. Well, before recently, anyway. Since hmm. the beginning, the real thing that's made a Kirby game what it was, was using enemies against themselves, whether by inhaling and shooting them out, copy oh, yeah. abilities, etc. Heck, the theme song of the TV show spells it out. Right back at ya. Yeah. Because of that, there's a plethora of unique right games to be you? found in this series oh, to execute this idea, whether it's a diamond in the rough or a classical black sheep. Epic Yarn falls more into the latter. This oh, is Nintendo's yeah, this first game. take on the arts and crafts style platformers before the baton was passed on to Yoshi. And for what it is, right. it's a pretty well-made game, with great visuals, soothing soundtrack, cool. and colorful, creative stages. Not often do you see art direction becoming an integral part of the gameplay, but this game really honestly, puts the yarn really and fabric cool. aesthetics to great use in its level designs. Not to mention, it's just way too adorable. If you're looking it to relax, this game's got a lot of ways super, to melt your heart. Super, so, super why did people hate this game again? Oh yeah, this came out at a time when people only wanted hardcore. Unfortunately, back oh, then, cool. people's Smart scope cool. for what games should be were kind of limited, and weirdly, Kirby fans were no exception. Knowing that you can't die in this game turns off quite a number of people because the general oh, yeah. consensus is that death... That's right, you actually can't die. All you do is just lose uh, gems and stuff up here. Huh. I never realized that. There is no death was the sole risk for hmm. challenge. And how is the game even hard? What's the point if you can just play forever? Sure, if you play the game while turning off your brain, you can get through everything without even Never trying. That. But there's more to that. Epic Yarn encourages you to play like a completionist, meaning collecting a lot of beads, not getting hit too much, and clearing nice. stages with the highest possible scores. Nice. And believe me, those are much much harder to do than it sounds. Yeah. Besides, death isn't even a foolproof method of challenge given how some games have used it as a progress saver, especially in speedruns. There's nothing wrong with a game that tries a different scope with its gameplay, and Epic Yarn proves that. A game can be really pretty like and comfy and it. still really well done. Nice to see more and more people are growing to appreciate that over time, since games that do this sort of thing have become more common nowadays and even became staples in the indie market. Let's hope it stays that way, because therapeutic huh, games like these do game. deserve that recognition. The original Ace Attorney trilogy has been regarded as a commendable classic, even before its localization. The story of Phoenix Wright and his rise to glory has become a quintessential component that made the series as meaningful as it is. So when an installment in the series like comes out to continue that legacy, fans weren't sure what to expect. The main character is different, and everything takes place years in the future. But hey, knowing that Phoenix is yeah. in the game, that should have garnered back the interest of old fans, I mean, right? Still would be yeah, cool, uh... it? Let's see that initial reaction. Yep, Damn. Apollo's debut <laughs> game right. was not very smiled upon, and a lot of that came down to how they handled his more beloved precursor. Phoenix, whom we used oh, to know as a virtuous game. attorney fighting <laughs> for truth and justice, is now a deadbeat who lost his badge, holds what? custody of a girl claiming to be his daughter, gets Damn. into fights in Wait, pubs, what? and cheats both during poker and in court. Not to mention he's kind of a cold jerk, barely Is reacting it? to physical trauma and shrugging over dire situations um, while giving crummy advice. Insert last Jedi joke here. Gotta okay, get that's picking strange. On. Why would they make him a deadbeat? I mean, if anything, shouldn't they have made him um, like something kind of like more of a legend? And 
Like, maybe he gave up the badge willingly and just decided to go live a peaceful life or something. And, ooh, that would have actually been a good idea. Then maybe Edgewell tries to frame him for a crime, and which would force the new main character... Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Forces the new main character to take up the role of Phoenix that helps protect Phoenix. I like that idea. Well, I'll see all of you in a moment. I know these cuts are going to be annoying, but hey, I have to. It's pretty obvious why people were quick to turn away from this game, given how sharp of a turn it took from what old fans were familiar with in the no series. Doubt. There's a lot of gimmicky moments like this as well. Hit and miss minigames, nonsensical time travel, and the questionable introduction to the jury system that didn't see future use in the chronological timeline. Wait, that said, system. if you're willing to look past all that, Apollo hmm. Justice is still, by essence, a good Ace Attorney game. It still maintains all the hmm. elements that made these games so great. The mysteries are wacky and fun, the characters are unique and well-developed, and Just it like still has right. that quintessential music and visual style we familiarize with and enjoy. It certainly took the fans a Seems while to good. welcome this game into the lineup, but at some point, they did. The games have been given a lot more tribute in recent times, hmm. and praise is given to how ambitious it is, despite the hiccups it had to go through to get there. History tends to repeat itself with I more modern say. games in the series, seeing criticism for opposite reasons, mainly due to the community being generally split about the direction the series took. Regardless, hmm. that doesn't change the fact that these games, for most of the time, know how to nail that good old Ace Attorney vibe. No matter how badly a game in the there's series could see itself it. be pelted, as long as it still has interesting mysteries and great characters, there's always something there for fans to look back to and appreciate. Yeah, even if they hate it. There's always something to look back on and like smile about. It's no secret that Mega Man has had some great games over the years, and some... Not so great games. Wait, this is true of most long running Sonic franchises, one? but when Mega Man stinks, it really stinks. Enough so that people hmm. outright ignore the follow ups, even if they're good or even great games in their own right. This phenomenon happened twice in slightly different forms, so I wanted All to right, talk okay. about both of them oh, Mega Man X8 oh. and Mega Man Star Force. Yeah, For anyone who's been around, Mega Man X7 has a legendary reputation for I know Star being. Force. Awful. Oh, so yeah. bad, in Sorry fact, that. that some people even swore off Mega Man entirely. Which is a shame because X8 ended up being pretty darn good. The combat was hmm. snappier, the movement didn't feel like you were moving through molasses, got rid of those abysmal 3D segments, and there was one other right, thing. That's cool. What was it? Oh yeah, you didn't have to unlock X. Thankfully, people eventually gave hmm. Mega Man cool. X8 a shot, and it took its rightful place as a fan favorite. A Mega Man series that wasn't quite so lucky, even if its fans are very dedicated, is Mega Man Star Force. I remember Star this Force game. is a direct I sequel series to the Mega Man Battle Network series, which in this case is more of a burden than a boon. Battle Network burned players in a different way than to like X7. This. It caused burnout. Battle Network had six mainline games and three side games, enough to make Kingdom Hearts blush, and most people agree <laughs> Battle Network no, no, overstayed okay. its welcome hard. It so it comes as a little surprise overdone. when a sequel series Sorry. was announced, people thought it was going to be more of the same and gave it a pass. Which was a kind way of saying people were so sick of Battle Network, they avoided Star Force like the plague. After that, that, Star Force and Battle Network both just kind of faded into the back of public consciousness. Fortunately, a small but extremely loyal fan base eventually grew up around Star Force, and I am not being held hostage by one of them Ooh, to spread Black the good Dragon. word. Cool. Not at all. Cut. And, oh, wait, wait. Cut again. Sorry about that, just ignore those last few seconds. Let's just continue on now. Oh, you fan. Despite releasing well into the N64's Ooh, Paper lifespan, Mario. Paper Mario is fondly regarded as a classic. The simple no, yet nice. effective combat, likable characters, and charming art shit. style made it an awesome. instant hit. Thousand Year Door was even better, taking everything that made the original great and pushing it to the next level. With this Definitely. in mind, it's no wonder why Super Paper Mario was so divisive upon release. Right what? off the bat, the yeah. art style was massively changed. This, alongside the lack of <laughs> typical Mario NPCs, made it feel less familiar it compared to the previous two. To say nothing of the changes to the think. gameplay, in a massive departure from the previous entries, Super Paper Mario was primarily a platformer with some light RPG elements. Hmm. While the game certainly had some fans, they were few and far between. 
So what happened to make people change their minds? Neither did some assist. Sticker Star games. happened. Just about oh, everything no that made the previous games great was completely gone. The combat yep, was dumbed down right. to insultingly simple right. levels, and the environments were incredibly bland. Mm. Most damningly, the story and characters were paper thin. <laughs> I can't get mad at this pun because it's not an exaggeration. This made people take a look back at Super and learn to appreciate it for its own merits. The gameplay, while undeniably different, is still fun in its own right, but what eh, really got fans to change it. their mind was the story. In addition to likable characters and humor, story. you had an excellent group of villains and a plot that was willing yeah, to get like incredibly Black. dark. While it's still not everyone's cup of tea, it's far easier to find fans of Super Paper Mario than Sticker Star nowadays. You know what's yeah. bad when the best thing I could say about Sticker Star was that it made people hate Super Paper Mario less. <laughs> oh, you know what? That's kind of ironic. Like, you make a game and people hate it, so they love Sonic they has hate had it. some turbulence <laughs> over the last, uh, I don't know, 20 or so years. Ever since yeah, Adventure 2, maybe, Sonic maybe. game quality has gone more up and down than a temperature chart in New England. But was Sonic <laughs> Adventure 2 the last real good Sonic game? I'd say no. Depends the 2D Sonic ask. games that have been coming out have been incredible, with some exceptions. Sonic Advance, Sonic Rush, Sonic Mania, and Sonic hmm. 4 have all been great games with exceptional reviews. The 3D I've Sonic games Sonic have Mania. had more trouble. Sonic Colors and Generations were both good, excluding the remaster of the former. But were there any yeah, other 3D like Sonic them. games that are worthy of being considered good by fans? Well, I can think of two. Sonic Heroes and Unleashed. Before I get to the werehog size huh. hole in the wall that I just caused, let's talk Heroes. When it first came out, people didn't like it because it didn't have the exploration or story beats that Adventure had coined. 12 play- I never actually heard any hate from Adventure, but I did always hear a lot of hate from Unleashed because, you know, everyone's like, Oh God, what have they done to my boy? When it's just a gimmick for the one game. Multiple characters separated into it. four different teams is a great concept. But then you have those four teams each go through the same zones. Sure, those yeah. zones are altered depending <laughs> on the team, but it still felt like a downgrade from Adventure. Despite that, this I think Heroes is still done. a fun game with great stage design, fun gameplay, and a decent enough story with Metal Sonic taking focus Ooh, for the nice. first time since CD. <laughs> Unfortunately, since it was the main... Kneel before your master. I like that line. Follow up after Reminds Adventure 2, everyone battle. compared it to that. Luckily, with its follow-ups being Shadow the Hedgehog and Sonic 06, Heroes came back up <laughs> in people's opinion. Yeah, that it okay. never got a PC port, unlike Sonic Lost World for some reason. And, and then we have Sonic Unleashed. Okay, have you guys played this game? I mean, I've recently. I've people play it. Was the game really that bad? Yes, the Werehog stages were slow and a massive departure from the day stages, but they were still functional. It was Baby's I mean, it, first beat em up and it really wasn't that bad. Can't and with really the night it. stages being okay, the day stages were phenomenal! This felt like the fastest Sonic has ever felt, and the actual stage designs were amazing! Even Story I was pretty cool too, that. seeing what was supposed to be Sonic in Eggman's last battle, only for Eggman to turn it on its head at the last second and literally split the world in seven parts. <laughs> That's insane! Yes, like we got the werehog out of it, but you really need to take off the werehog blinders and see this game for what it is. A Everyone's functional and decent this, this Sonic game. Gimmick. Though this game never got ported either and could only be played on modern consoles via Xbox, I really hope they port this game one day. Just do it correctly, unlike colors, and probably replace the Xbox and PS3 final boss with the Wii and PS2 one, as I don't hmm. want to button mash the Y button 60 times in 30 seconds ever again. I won't say Ugh. that Heroes or Unleashed were masterpieces. That, that Honestly, Adventure 2 wasn't either, nor was Colors or Generations. But I feel like all of those games can still be considered part of the good 3D Sonic game side of the coin. They I mean, still did a lot so of great good, things that people loved in more points. popular Sonic games, and people are starting to realize that now more and more. And I, sure, and like almost every other Sonic. entry on this list, it was because worse games came out after. But if that's what it takes sometimes for people to appreciate games that deserve it, then I don't mind slogging through a Sonic... Some, sometimes when people uh, sometimes when people need to smile at one piece of shit, they need to see a more disgusting piece of shit. Boomer 2 to get there. Not saying Sonic is shit. I never played any of the games personally, but hey, you know. Enjoy it if you enjoy it. That's all. Number 4. You may have noticed that a lot of entries on this list are more recent games, as in games released after 2010. 
That's because, yeah, let's yeah, face it, it's a lot easier to gauge the collective fandom opinions nowadays thanks to social media. It's both a blessing and a curse. A blurse, if mm. you will. Not that collective oh, yeah. fandom opinions Gotham weren't around back in the Gotham day. There was always message boards and forums, but only the most hardcore of gamers used them to share their opinions. Hmm. Only the loudest and most passionate get their thoughts put front and center. And that really hasn't changed much today. Oh yeah? Well, I speak loud! And I carry a bigger stick! And I use it too! For better or worse. <laughs> the only thing like that's really US different presidents. is the numbers. Why do I bring uh, this up? One? Because Crap, good evidence remember. for this entry was really hard to come by because so many message boards have been lost to internet hit. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Not again. <sighs> well, I guess I'll see you all in the history. Oh, wait. Still, we had to try Never because mind. I remember the surprising backlash oh. that Metroid Fusion got. Really? I'll give you a second to find your socks that just blew off. You're lying! I wish I was lying, yeah, but well, yep, Metroid Fusion, <laughs> the fourth title in the franchise. After an eight-year gap between it and Super Metroid, the huh. chapter that brought us the terrifying oh, nice. SAX nice. didn't impress gamers when it first came out. But why? I, it it had a great soundtrack, me. the graphics and atmosphere were really nice, the controls were tight, it gave Samus some much-needed characterization. Oh wait, I think I know what the problem was. I don't like change! Yeah, uh, unfortunately, fans of anything cowboys. can be pretty adverse to change. So imagine how they felt when they saw such blasphemy in a Metroid game. <gasps> hmm. Having clear objectives and direction, a stronger focus on the story, I would have liked difficulty, that. I liked that. it was unheard of. Of course, what really didn't help was that around this the same time, Metroid like, Prime though. came out and fans gravitated more towards it uh, with the traditional breadcrumb yeah, okay. style progression, kinder difficulty curve, and it was in 3D. And a first-person shooter. All right, Maybe fine, you heard of some of them. Fine. They weren't really common at the time. Thankfully, such rejection didn't last very long, and now you can't browse YouTube without tripping over a Metroid Fusion video essay written by some loser millennial. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. I don't think you're a millennial. I mean, a millennial would be more like my brother. Oh, well, because that's the age he was born at. I mean... Hmm. Wait. You know that whole... Well, eight stuff is actually very difficult to understand. Oh, see all of you in a moment. I've said countless oh, times how okay, much I again, love I Metroid Fusion, Great. so That's it does good. my heart good to see people give it the appreciation it deserves. Of course, what really helped shoot up Fusion's popularity was when the hate target was placed on another Metroid game's back. One oh, that actually one? deserved it. Other M. Oh, People yeah. with fond memories of Samus's characterization in Fusion, as well as the iconic line, Any objections, lady, were excited <laughs> to see a stronger delve into Samus's personality. So, to see Samus's <laughs> character come off in such a bastardized way was a huge letdown. Don't ever mention how much I hated Other M. This uh, Samus will not I think so. stop talking. Now, at this point, you may be thinking, wow, that sounds like a really bad idea for a game mechanic. You usually had no idea what the f you were looking for. Adam comes across as a complete a-hole, and it looks like Samus just rolls Major over and takes his unnecessary harshness because why? What the f is wrong with you, you stupid excuse for a melting? Okay, well, give us a moment. I feel like I mentioned it once right. or twice at some point. So, naturally, people are going to look back more fondly on the game that did the most contentious part better and completely ignore all other complaints they may have had. And cut. And we're back with number three. You know, uh, since he is using Skyward short, uh, short Clips and all, I actually wonder if he's going to have it on here. I mean, I actually kind of liked it. Uh, the only thing I could have said about this, uh, Skyward Sword, the way it would have been bad, would just be the whole motion Fallout 3 controls. was a game changer upon release. Thanks to the innovative VAT system, it perfectly bridged the gap between RPG and FPS. So when New Vegas was announced, fans were hyped for how it could move the series forward. The initial reaction to New Vegas was... Okay, while not exactly hated per se, many fans and critics saw it as more of a glorif- And yet now, uh, whenever anyone talks about Fallout, New Vegas is apparently just the, uh, god game of them all. Doesn't even matter if you played it or not. Fight expansion to up. Fallout 3 than an actual sequel. It didn't help that the technical state was a mess, which can be blamed on the rush development cycle. Nowadays, oh. New Vegas is considered by many to be the best game in the series. Yeah, see, Why is I this? Say? Well, a lot of it comes to the story. New Vegas was developed by Obsidian, with the dev team consisting of key members from the original two Fallouts. 
This made it feel way mm -hmm. more like a true successor to them than 3 was. Right off the okay. bat, your player character has far less of a defined backstory. You're not on some epic quest to find your father or son. You're just a rando trying to find the guy that shot you. This made it far easier to be who you <laughs> wanted pull and, a you know, in the guy play a bullet in, in this me. role-playing game franchise. In terms of morality, there was no explicit good or evil faction. Do you side with the I NCR and try to bring the side. Wasteland back to pre-war glory? Do you side with Mr. House and try to usher in a new era? Do you side with the Legion and rule through sheer brutality? Or do you reject all of them and start your own ideology? Yeah, so there you, it is. There's no true ending. But what really <laughs> made people reevaluate New Vegas was on, Fallout boy. 4. While the combat and visuals were definitely a step up, the RPG mechanics took a major hit. The dialogue and skill systems were oversimplified, which made it harder to make unique character builds. The new factions hmm. tried to match the depth of New Vegas, but just came off as pale imitations. Quests had significantly fewer ways to resolve them, which led to- I mean, Wouldn't it always be better instead of trying to mimic or copy someone to do your own? I mean, I mean that, that's just me. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm Far less replay value. But the benefit of hindsight, New Vegas is seen by a growing number of players as the perfect blend of old school and modern Fallout. People do Let me put it to you this way. If you want to start a flame war, go to 4chan and say you don't like Fallout New Vegas. <laughs> oh. Maybe another time. Maybe another time. Number two. Ah, the Nintendo GameCube. Uh, True, it wasn't much to look at and kind of lacked in terms Charles of features. No, its controller and expansive quality library more than made up for its plainness. And it's Love become it. one of the most fondly remembered consoles in Nintendo's history. However, did you know that some Melee. of its most iconic <laughs> titles weren't as well received as they are now? Okay, okay you're lying. What like makes what? you lie? Yep, when they first came out, a lot of the GameCube's most notable titles were kind of shrugged off for one hmm. reason or another. Kind of like the console itself. Take, for example, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Really? It really came out huh. at a bad time. Again, this was the age where gamers I wanted a copy hard of that game. Hardcore game with plenty of edge, not some Call of Duty. Uh, let's see. The version of this I have is actually, I think, the reawakened version. Or whatever it's called. Kitty crap. Funny enough, it was these complaints that actually inspired Twilight Princess, unquestionably one of the darkest titles in the Zelda franchise. So, I guess some good came out of the complaints. Thankfully, however, it's a lot of fans look back good. at Wind Waker fondly, saying how the cell shading aged beautifully and the story had a fun, relaxing atmosphere. I like guess it. it was just the calm before. Yeah, before his crazy ass. Before that. Then there's Animal like Crossing. Uh, At the time, planet. kids were all like, Ew, real life? Who wants to play a live simulator? But as adults, <laughs> now we're like, Ew, real life? Let me escape to the kitsy refuge of my real life. I don't care how <laughs> on the nose <laughs> no. it is, it's still super cute. And considering how popular the franchise is now, the rest is history. Then there are hmm, games that right. dared to break the mold of their traditional style. And it didn't really land well at first. Take, for example, hmm. Super Mario Sunshine. People hated it because of the wonky voice acting, and the I gameplay really was based more on the jetpack rather than the traditional platformer jumping from thing to thing. The lack of serious iconography like Goombas and Koopas didn't help either. Nowadays, it's more loved because of the unique setting and <laughs> puzzles that feel a lot more novel. It's kind of funny. Mario games of this day and age are criticized for being less innovative and more repetitive. And yet, when they tried something new with Sunshine, people hated it. You really can't win. Speaking of, the same mindset- you know, even I have to agree with that. It's like, people complain about uh, the old continuous, so you try something new. People complain about uh, the new, so you go back to the old. And it's just a continuous cycle. Kinda applied to Luigi's Mansion. I'm not scared. That game was just awful. Even Luigi didn't like it. No, it was a game cube. All of those games were terrible. Jeez, <laughs> poor Luigi. Uh, he finally gets a game all to himself where he's the big hero instead of just the scaredy cat brother. And it got panned when it first came out because it wasn't a platformer and was too short for players' likings. I like Thankfully, it. years later, people have changed their tune once they learn to appreciate the unique gameplay, great world building, and atmosphere, I and really how like much it, it developed Luigi. It ended yeah, up becoming an underrated classic, but it still spawned two sequels for the 3DS and Switch. It Love just it. goes to show that sometimes you never appreciate something until it's gone. In this case, the GameCube and its really underrated library. Sometimes people don't actually know what they want in the moment. Eh, I mean, 
just make and see what happens. Honorable mentions now. Let's go. Among Us was never really hated when it launched, mm. but it didn't blow up into a meme until yeah. two okay. years Sorry. after it was released. Metal Gear Solid 2, while the romance was annoying, meta commentary was very ahead of its time. Never played Resident it. Evil 5, you really never think about it, it, it's almost exactly like RE4, and people are beginning to take notice. Arkham Origins, the only title in never the franchise not developed by Rocksteady, and yet it did what the other Arkham games couldn't do make Bane look like a legitimate threat. Vanquish came out at a time Never oversaturated with third person cover shooters. Silent Hill Shattered Memories Never was more it. psychological than the usual series grotesque and Homecoming and Origins left a bad taste in fans' mouths. Street Fighter 3, there's a three. Yeah, while it did remove some big it. characters, it made it. some huge leaps forward technical wise, Earthbound. At the time, love it. nowadays, if God had a favorite game, it might be Earthbound. <laughs> Final Fantasy XII, the disaffected middle Never child between 10 and 13 was a bit too menu grindy and micromanagey than fans had expected at the time. Final Fantasy IX, if I had a nickel for every formerly hated installment in a fantasy franchise that featured a sudden shift to a cartoony art ball. style, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Right? Fire Emblem, <laughs> Sacred Stones, how dare a Fire Emblem game be easy you already know it. or accessible? I'm noticing a pattern with this series. Pokemon over the last few years have been pretty. Pokemon's always been great in my opinion. Love it. And the mons themselves, now that can be hit or miss, depending on what mon you're looking at. And but Pokemon in general, it's just great. And then again, hit or miss depend Then again, I might be speaking a little biasy since that was really the first ever game I ever played in life. Depending on who you ask. With all the mm -hmm. controversies surrounding Sword and Shield, Pokemon's opinions of the series range from yay to eh to I want to burn Pokemon to the ground with a Charizard. Oh. It didn't begin with Sword and Shield though. All those games did was throw gasoline on a passive flame that's been lit since probably Generation 3. Similar really? to the Halo Damn. franchise, Pokemon goes through cycles of the newest games are terrible and the best games were two or three iterations ago. I don't know if people yep, still use this word, lot. but back in the day, we had a term Gen 1ers to describe fans who despised anything that wasn't the original 151. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been around the block. I and I've seen hate for generations of Pokemon that are considered untouchable now. Remember when Fawful's minion got so much hate Ooh. for putting Generation 4 as the best gen and Generation 1 as the worst? Josh Scorcher remembers. I, actually I know. remember when people hated Generation 4. 4! Why did many people believe that 4 was the harbinger oh. of doom for the franchise? Mostly because of freaking Bidoof. You know. No, seriously, really? Gen 4's slow pacing was a secondary gripe from the fan base. I think this phenomenon happens be because safe. each they new generation contains a design choice that doesn't perform well, that two or three generations ago was probably the best it's been. Hmm. Gen 6 was hated for its dumb story and lackluster rivals and previous eh, games had some of the best ones. So we see Gen 7 try to recoup with better storytelling and more dynamic villains and rivals. Oh, Things but I forget about the time that Gen it. 7 was the worst that Pokemon has ever been because it was too handholdy for fans at the start. But nowadays oh, it's on. praised for the amount of technical improvements it's added compared to Gen <laughs> 8, like IV tracking and, oh, I don't know, the removal of HMs. I could go I on and on, but like as that. you've gathered from the rest of this list, when gamers see issues with the current games that are coming out in a series they like, They'll go back to previous games in the series to experience the rose-tinted good old times. As a long-time Pokemon fan, it. it's often frustrating that the fan base often hyper-focuses on what each generation didn't do well, rather than the things they did do well that are now franchise staples. Yeah, you gotta see the good. Gen 2 gave us held items and more involved gym leaders. 3 gave us double battles and abilities. 4 Love gave it. us the physical special split and the TARDIS bag. 5 that. gave us reusable TMs and a dynamic camera. Love 6 it. gave us a customizable appearance and mega evolutions. 7 like gave us regional variants and killed HMs for good. And given like the it. hype for Legends Arceus, I'm pretty sure we're gonna look back pretty fondly on Gen 8's wild area. And that's like not it. going into the sporadic improvements throughout, such as new evolutions, typing, and balancing. <laughs> Which brings me to- You know what's even better is that he's saying all this pretty much right after Gen 9 was introduced. That's right, the Pokemon region, uh, the Pokemon games are now heading to Spain and Portugal. Well, Continue expanding that map. We must incorporate the entire Poké world. To what I consider to be the number one most hated generation that people now love. 
black and white. Oh, People didn't thought, really huh? didn't like this at first because of a few issues. The map was very linear for one. There was no returning Pokemon from previous games until post-game. Only yeah, new ones. I like and that. some Pokemon designs were lazy to very annoying degrees. And yes, I'm talking about the ice cream cone, the literal snowflake, yeah. and a garbage bag. And even other mm. new designs felt like alterations of previous Pokemon. Machop to Timber, for one. And the story was different. It went to more realistic norms with the PETA-like enemy team and the idealistic leader. All of these add up to a mess like that led people opinion. to really dislike kind of Gen 5. And then Gen 6 came out, and then suddenly Black and White became the shining examples of Pokemon the world over. Oh, sure, the map was linear, but the post game huh. was plentiful. For every lazy Pokemon design like Clink and Vandalite, you got cool ones like Bisharp and Axagor. Plus, it's nice. not like older generations were innocent of lazy designs. Yes, I'm talking about the Pokeballs with eyes. And <laughs> people came around to prefer the grittier and ch- I'm all about the rocks with eyes and arms. Huh? 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 challenging story to the obvious and gaudy one in Gen 6. And then Sword and Shield came out, and holy moly, and the love for the Black and again. White utterly skyrocketed. Not unfoundedly, Sword and Shield had easily the worst villain teams we've seen in a while, so naturally, I mean, people are going back to look team. more fondly at the games where we had the best ones. And when you look at all of this, it's easy to see how Black and White went from two games that everyone didn't like to the shining example to what Pokemon games should be. Eh, I do have my on. own nitpicks about Black and White, of course. I don't think the games are perfect, nor do they do things better than modern Pokemon games in some ways. Plus, the ending with Getsis and the only new Pokemon thing still leave fans divided. But it's kind of hard I to mean, ignore that Black, White, Black Trying 2, and light. White 2 are a really cohesive package when it comes to Pokemon games. And even if they shouldn't be striving to replicate Gen 5 exactly, <laughs> Game Freak Gen has <laughs> shown us, each generation, that they can knock some aspect of a Pokemon game out of the park that fans will look fondly back on. I'm Fiery Joker, and at the time of this recording, Pokemon Arceus is not out yet, so... Please be good, 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 please <laughs> And with that is where we're going to leave off today's video. I want you all to remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Oh, uh, down in the description will be a link to the original video, so remember to support the creator and all they do. And I'll see all of you folks next time, so have a good 